This is the day the Lord has made. Be glad in it. Grace, mercy, and peace to you, friends, from our Lord Jesus Christ. I welcome you here today. Uh, it is a blessing to worship God with you, and we are glad uh, to be here to do that together. Um, this is, friends, the First Presbyterian Church of Conway, a PCUSA congregation that joyfully seeks to follow Jesus and extend God's loving community to all people. I'd like to invite you to sign the friendship pads and to pass those along the pews. And also, I would encourage you to look to the announcement section of your bulletins, uh, as well as the church's social media feeds and your email inbox for a little bit of what is happening in the life of the church. Uh, there you will find announcements on our next Tuesday's Together gathering, which is this week, this Tuesday evening. Uh, also, just to give you a heads up, that Tuesdays, if you heard this, Tuesdays are going to be moving to Wednesdays. Uh, that move for our Tuesdays Together gatherings uh, will be switching to Wednesday nights, first and third Wednesdays in July. Uh, so this month throughout June, we're still going to be on Tuesdays. Uh, but in July, we'll make that switch, and uh, we'll come up with some other Wednesday-related title for it. We have a month, so help us out. Do lots of praying. Um, but uh, yes, we're excited about that move. Many of you said Wednesday would be better for you and or your family, so we're excited about making that switch. But for June, we'll still be meeting on Tuesdays. Uh, this week and next week, we are installing and ordaining deacons uh, from the class of, gosh, 2023 and 2024, um, installing officers we hadn't been able to uh, during the pandemic. And so this is a special celebration on Pentecost Sunday and the Sunday following, Trinity Sunday, that we're able to do that. As part of next week's service, we'll also be recognizing and appreciating those who just rotated off of uh, serving on the session and the deacons. So uh, please you know, you'll want to be here for that. It's wonderful. Uh, we have a Pentecost offering today. You can read about the, the, the causes that that will go and the people that that will help. And you can also register for VBS. That's all in your bulletin. One other announcement, as you probably noticed, we've got things going on in the fellowship hall. Uh, a blood drive is happening here at the church today, and so that's a wonderful occasion uh, to help others out in the name of Christ. Uh, we do want you to know that uh, you can sign up for appointments. Uh, make sure you don't do it during the sermon time. I say that every time. But anyway, um, but yes, participate in that. You can do it after worship. You can do it at times during worship. But uh, the other thing folks will want to know is for children, children's church will not take place in there where it normally does. It'll be in room 116, which is in the education wing of the church room 16. Miss Selena will remind you all of that uh, at the end of the children's sermon time. Lots of wonderful things happening in the life of the church. Lots of wonderful things happening here today. If you're in this space, we're glad you're here. If you're worshiping with us online or television, uh, likewise, we are glad you're here. This is a place, friends, and if you're a visitor, uh, uh, this is a place to make friends, to be encouraged, to be nurtured in your walk of faith, uh, people here will support you and encourage you and um, love you and challenge you and all those good things as siblings in Christ do. Uh, and it is a blessing to be here. We want you to know this, though. We're not perfect. We are not a perfect church full of perfect people. But we certainly do strive uh, to follow our faithful God and share Christ's perfect love. If you should decide you'd like to know more about what God is doing in and through this people, uh, and hear about the path towards membership in the church. I hope you'll see me following worship or reach out to me this week, and uh, we'll have that conversation together. But for now, friends, let us prepare our hearts and our minds to worship God.
O oh God, pour out your Spirit on all flesh. The young and old cry out together, pour out your Spirit on all flesh. may be seated. God of everlasting life, we confess that we continue in the ways of death. We try to build towers to the heavens and ignore the plight of people on earth. We sneer at the voices of prophets and squander the gifts of your spirit. Forgive us, God of grace. Lead us by your Holy Spirit to live as your beloved children, those you have called and claimed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now let us silently confess our sins. Trust this good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and free to live for Him. Thanks and praise to our Savior, Jesus Christ, forever. Amen.
pass the peace of Jesus Christ to one another this morning. We invite you, if you're in this space, uh, to shake hands if you like. If you're not comfortable doing that yet, you can exchange signs of peace. We'll respect that. Uh, also, if you are worshiping uh, virtually today, we, we invite you to use uh, social media platforms or texting to share the peace of Christ with one another. And friends, the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Peace be with you. This morning comes from Romans chapter 8, 14 through 17. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with Him so that we may also be glorified with Him. The Word of the Lord.
We now invite the younger church to come forward and pay special attention to our time with the children. Good morning. I have some really special news for you today, and that is a week from today, we have our food truck party VBS. Yay! Say yay if you're excited. Yay! Okay. Good job, everyone. Thank you very much. It is almost time to get ourselves on a roll with God. It's going to be great getting together at the food truck court. I mean, who doesn't love a food truck? So much fun, right? Yeah. There's going to be cool music, exciting science, creative crafts, fun recreation, and memorable Bible stories. We'll learn all about how we can turn to God to provide our daily needs and how we can join God in providing for the needs of others. Now, I brought our main Bible verse with me. Can you read that? Give us this day our daily bread. Yeah, give us this day our daily bread. Can you say that with me? Give us this day our daily bread. What that means and what we're going to learn is how God provides for God's people and how God still provides today. How often? Daily. Every single day God is providing for us. Thank you, Lord, for that. So I hope that you will plan to join us at the food truck party. I think a lot of you are already registered, but just in case you're not, let's make sure that your parents know. There is a QR code in the bulletin. There is a website link, and I have paper copies if anybody prefers to do it the old-fashioned way. Um, with just a paper. Um, I do have stickers here for you. Would you like one? That's to help you remember and get it. You want the donut stickers, right? Because I like donuts. Yes, you get the donut stickers. Okay, don't, just a minute. I'll make sure everybody gets a sticker, okay? And maybe you get one of your favorite food truck food. Can you also have this big food truck party sticker? Bloop. Ooh, it goes perfect with your shirt. So the dates are June 12th through 16th. It's 5 evenings in a row from is six what, is that what the food truck is gonna look like yes from six to eight p.m also i encourage you to invite your neighbors this is a great time to have fun fellowship with the lord and to help raise up our children now before we leave i'd like to make sure that parents you know if your children is going to um children's church today if your child is going to children's church today You'll pick them up in a different spot, room 116, which is in that far back corner over there. Children, if you will please wait for me to walk back with you because we're in a different space that's yeah, farther it's away. It's it's, away. Oh, that's a good spot. Okay, so everyone um, pick out your favorite sticker and then we're, um, let's bless our congregation. Can we tell them God be with you here? Can you say that together? God be with you here. Thank you. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen.
Hear now these words, friends, from the second chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. Listen for the word of the Lord. This is the story of Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God God indeed. So many of you know this about me. I uh, was a literature major in college and I taught English. Uh, for some time off and on. And occasionally people ask me, well, what is your favorite type of literature? And um, my favorite type of literature is called the Bildungsroman. Has anybody heard of that? A few, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, English teachers, right? Yeah, we know. It's a coming-of-age story is essentially what it is. It, it's, a, it's a form of literature. It's a novel. It's, it, it, it tells how someone grows up, generally goes through adolescence, and, and comes to terms with life, right? Grows and matures and, and develops some skill or ability um, it, uh, to make a difference in the world. It, 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 you know, many of our common stories out there are coming-of-age stories, aren't there? And, and, and some of our most popular stories... Two of the most popular, you know, movie franchises of all time, right? Star Wars started, the original trilogy was a Bildungsroman, a coming-of-age story of Luke, right? And, and the Harry Potter stories are coming-of-age stories of, you know, Harry, Hermione, and Ron. If, you, if you're familiar with, you know, you, you love the Harry Potter world, it is a Bildungsroman. Growth into maturity. Gaining wisdom. Seeing the fallibility of our heroes and our mentors. Rising to meet the challenges that face us in life. Learning to be less self-focused and self-centered. To appreciate that there are others in the world that we can serve and love. And it is an interesting practice, if you will, go with me here just momentarily, okay? To read the Bible in those terms. To read them as a growth narrative. 
to read it as a growth narrative, pardon me. And while the Bible is certainly not a novel, it's not a Bildungsroman, but we can see in it a story of God and humanity, and humanity growing and learning in wisdom, we hope, over the years. And I do want to remind you, something that we talk about a lot here, is the difference between salvation and sanctification, right? Salvation, we believe, happens once and for all in Jesus Christ. We are saved. But sanctification is a process where we learn and grow and mature throughout the rest of our lives until our glorification when we return to Christ in the church triumphant. Follow me, if you will through a portion of the story of the Bible and see the growth and maturity that happens in the people of God. Adam and Eve. They live in the garden. They walk with God daily, but they disobey God, right? And so they're banished from the garden. And the people are scattered at Babel and wayward, and so we see Noah and the flood. With Abraham and Sarah, we get a promise, and then through one of their descendants, we get Moses, the prophet who delivers the people from bondage and slavery. Moses has an interesting experience of God, and God tries through all the stories of these people to interact with them, but they're only interested in so much of relationship with God. Take Moses for an example. Moses meets with God in the midst of the people, but God is loud, the people find. And they prefer that God and Moses have their conversations up there on the mountain rather than in their midst. And so Moses does. And when he comes down from the mountain and his face shines, the people know that he's been talking with God. Elijah too, the prophet, another great person of God, has an encounter with God on the mountaintop. You might recall his story. He hears God in the still small voice, but before the still small voice, there's a wind and an earthquake and a fire. Many generations later, Jesus would come to continue leading the people in the knowledge of righteousness and goodness and wisdom and love. And of course, to save us from ourselves. He too would go on top of a mountain to hear the voice of God and be transfigured into the image of God's Son, right? It's no coincidence that it's Moses and Elijah who meets him there. But, What I want to point out with all of this is, in all of these things, God led God's people generally through a few, one or two individuals who would go off and hear the Word of God and come back, right, and deliver that Word to the people. Usually, up until the passage we read today, God's Spirit, God's voice is heard and God's Spirit is known by individuals. Until Acts chapter 2. Something dramatically new happens. And a people that were to be the light of all nations and lead all the peoples of the world in the ways of goodness and justice and righteousness and mercy and wisdom become empowered in a bold new way. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, I read a few moments ago, Acts 2, verse 2. That wind is the good and godly presence in the midst of the people. Coming upon them is the Spirit of God, just like Moses on the mountaintop, just like Elijah on the mountaintop. But this time, it's not just one person who experiences God's Spirit. It's all the people gathered there to worship in the name of Jesus. It's the church. It's the church. And so when I talk about the Bible being a story of of, of 
the hope of the people of God growing in maturity and strength and power. This is a big part of it. It's not on our own. It's through the wisdom, the teaching, the love of God, but it's also now through the power of the Holy Spirit that the church becomes the church. It is a radical thing that a group of people had the Spirit of God descended upon them in that way. And of course, we have the story that the, the tongues and each one was speaking in a, a variety of languages at the same time, and, the, and, and, and we presume they were speaking, you know, about, about the goodness of Jesus Christ and the gospel, and everyone was hearing it in their own native language. And of course, Peter explains it using words of the prophet Joel. His explaining it, by the way, was so that they would understand what was happening, but it was also to justify the moment, saying, no, look, God told us this would happen through the prophet Joel. This is indeed God's movement among us. And so where do we go with this? Well, we go several places. As a church now, we're empowered truly to be the salt and light that Jesus told us to be. We've been given a purpose to share that light with the world. We have this Spirit of Christ in our midst. Each of us experiences it in our own way, and then we gather together to understand it, to discern it, to interpret it, and to to be the, the people who who are empowered by it together to make more of a difference in the lives of our community and the world. We are the church. And, as many have said, the Pentecost Sunday is the birthday of the church, and so we are grateful for that. We don't have a cake, but you can give blood when you're done worshiping today, if you like. But we do have something else. We do have some purposes. The the church doesn't exist for its own sake, right? It it exists for our salvation, and and, and it reminds us of that, and we're delighted in that, and for our sanctification as we grow in faith. But it exists for for several reasons, and we in our tradition, the, the Presbyterian tradition, believe that there are six great ends or purposes of the church. And, um, Actually, we have six lovely banners in our narthex when you leave worship today that inspire and remind us of each of those purposes. In the next several weeks, I'll be highlighting one of those purposes in worship so that we can remind ourselves what we as the church are to be about, what we're to be doing, and the difference that we make in the world, and the difference God chooses to make in the world through God's people. Amen? Amen. Let us rise and affirm what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our God, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen.
Please be seated. And let us, friends, let us join our hearts and minds together and pray to our good and gracious God. And Lord, we do turn to you today. We are so grateful. We are so grateful that as we pray to you, the Spirit intercedes on our behalf and you hear the longings of our hearts. You know our yearnings, our hopes, our dreams. Through your Spirit, you've planted many of those dreams within us. You've given us gifts. Sometimes we're able even to hear when you prompt us to use them for the benefit of your people. We thank you for the gift of your Spirit. We ask that you stir it within us, that we may sense your moving in our lives, that we may know that you are present, guiding and directing our steps, giving us words to say, love and hope to share. And even as we pray for these things, we are mindful of so many people in so many situations that desperately need your love, compassion, mercy, healing, restoration, reconciliation, strength, and direction. We think of those in times of various forms of need, physical, emotional, spiritual. We think of those putting back the pieces after one tragedy or another, those who find themselves in a place of war, conflict today, we lift them all up to you. We pray especially for those whose names are known to us, Jill, Pam, Holly, and Faith, and the rest of their families, Jack and Jackie, Mark, Mark, Marsha, Maureen, Dolph, as well as Jim, Rhonda, Bonnie, Jane, <clears throat> Bo, the DeBose and Steinmetz families, Reverend Sarah, Karen, Debbie, Josie, as well as Jeff, John Robert, Brian, Holbrook, Seth, and all military and their families especially in these uncertain times, O oh God. We lift all these people up to you, as well as those who remain silently at our hearts at this time. You know who they are, Lord. You know their needs. Hear us now as we join our voices together, praying the prayer your Son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <sighs> Friends, at this very special time in our worship service, I would like to call forward uh, certain individuals who will be ordained and or installed into active service in the church. I'd like to call forward Tony Edsel, Karen Nichols, Jane Martin, as well as Brandy Dickey, Jeff Riken, Susan Bradshaw, and Jenny Davis. And as they come forward, I just want to say a very special word of welcome to all of you family members and friends who came to uh, share this occasion with these individuals. Thank you for, for doing so. Yes, if you will stand here and face the congregation, please. And if any of you, if this goes long and you need a chair, there are chairs here. Just let me know. I will drive one forward. I might need these for this book. Some of you know what I'm talking about. All right, friends, there are varieties of gifts, but it is the same Spirit who gives them. There are different ways of serving God, but it is the same Lord who is served. God works through each person in a unique way, but it is God's purpose that is accomplished. To each is given a gift of the Spirit. 
to be used for the common good. Together we are the body of Christ, and individually we are members of it. We are called into the church of Jesus Christ by baptism and marked as Christ's own by the Holy Spirit. This is our common calling, to be disciples and servants of our servant Lord. Within the community of the church, some are called to a particular service, as deacons, as elders, as ministers of word and sacrament. Ordination is God's gift to the church, assuring that God's ministry continues among us, providing for ministries of caring and compassion in the world, ordering the governance of the church, and preaching the word and administering the sacraments. Representing the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, the session of this church, First Presbyterian Church of Conway, now ordains Karen Nichols and Jane Martin to the office of deacon, and Jenny Davis to the office of elder, and installs them to active service on their respective boards. The session also installs to active service those who have been previously ordained, Deacon Tony Edsel, and elders Brandy Dickey, Jeff Riken, and Susan Bradshaw. Because uh, ordination calls the whole church to a renewed commitment, I'd like to ask everyone present to rise for just a moment. And if you will, please answer these first two questions I do. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? If so, say, I do. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept Him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in His grace and love? Do you? Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying His word and showing His love? Will you? Thank you. Please be seated, except for our uh, new officers. To our candidates, I ask you these questions. Do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge Him Lord of all and head of the church, and through Him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you? Will you fulfill your office in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of Scripture and continually be guided by our confessions? Will you? Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? Will you? Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? Do you? Will you seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? Will you? To our deacons, Tony, Karen, Jane, I ask you this question, will you be a faithful deacon teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the friendless and those in need? In your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? And to our elders, Brandy, Jeff, Susan, Jenny, will you be a faithful elder watching over the people, providing for their worship nurture, and service? Will you share in governance and discipline, serving in governing bodies of the church? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? Congregation, do we, members of the church, accept these individuals as deacons and elders chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? If so, say, we do. we do. Friends, you have said so. At this time, we invite all those who have been ordained as an elder or a deacon or as a minister of word and sacrament to come forward. We will not lay on hands as we customarily do, but we will surround our candidates this morning. So if you would do so, please come forward and gather around them. Maybe we can make an arch around them. Maybe 
Everybody watch your step. This is a church with many who have been called to these particular forms of service for which we are grateful. Friends, let us pray. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon your servants whom you called through baptism as your own and marked as your own. Grant them the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Give them a spirit of truthfulness that they may show the compassion of Christ in the actions of daily living and rightly govern your people. Give them the gifts of your Holy Spirit to build up the church, to strengthen the common life of your people, and to lead with compassion and vision. In the walk of faith and for the work of ministry, give to your servants gladness and strength, discipline and hope, humility, humor, and courage, and an abiding sense of your presence. Gracious God, pour out your spirit of power and truth upon the whole church that we may be for you a holy people. Amen. Tony Edsel, Karen Nichols, Jane Martin, you are now a deacon in the church. Brandy Dickey, Jeff Riken, Susan Bradshaw, And Jenny Davis, you are now elders in the church. And for this congregation, be faithful and true in your ministry so that your whole life will bear witness to the crucified and risen Christ. Those of us who are gathered here around them, let let us greet them with signs of peace and love. And we invite you all now to please be seated. Thank you all for your particular form of service. We are grateful for each of you. And remember, friends, we have another group about, of about as many people next week who will be likewise ordained and installed. And it is such a blessing to have these people to serve alongside uh, with and, and, and to serve the church and community together with. Uh, God is good, as I like to say, and so are God's people. Thank you all. And again, next week we will not only celebrate this, these classes of incoming officers, but also recognize and celebrate the work of those who rotated off in the class of 2021. Let us now continue worshiping God with the giving of God's tithes and our offerings.
Hear your call to generous giving in the way you meet our needs each day and in the peace you give which passes understanding. Having received so much, we offer all we have, our time, talents, and money for your kingdom. Bless these gifts for the work of your church. Amen. Please be seated, friends. This morning we celebrate, and, and, and with joy and rightly so, uh, these individuals who uh, felt God's particularly calling upon their lives to serve as deacons and elders of the church. We also recognize that through the prophet Joel, God says, I will send my spirit to all flesh, to all people. We all have gifts and skills. We all have uh, the prompting of the Holy Spirit to lead and guide in our lives. We also all have an invitation. An invitation to live into that good and godly life through the power of the Spirit. And an invitation to practice ritually remembering the sacrifice that our Lord made to give us that life. Today we gather around this table, and I would remind you all, this is Christ's table. It may take residence in a Presbyterian church, but this is Christ's table. And if you believe in Jesus Christ, you are most welcome at this table. Friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed truly right to give our thanks and praise to you, O eternal God, our Creator. For you formed us in your image, loved us with an everlasting love, and graced us with gifts for serving in covenant with your people Israel. You raised up leaders, judges, monarchs, and prophets to show us your path of truth and nurture us in righteousness. When we were faithless, faithless and would not follow, you forgave us and returned us to your way. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, your only beloved, to be for us the way, the truth, and the life. And by your Spirit, he anointed all who would follow him to live a new life in your love. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the choirs of heaven and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Jesus told us that God would send the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, the one who would lead us and teach us in the way. In fact, He told us this the very night that He knew He was going to be betrayed and going to have to leave us. And so it was that He was gathered with His closest disciples to share a Passover meal. And he took a loaf of bread and he gave thanks for it and he broke it, saying, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat and do this in memory of me. And then in the same way, he took the cup and he poured it, saying, this is my blood shed for you as a sign and seal of a new covenant for the forgiveness of sins. So take of it and drink. For as often as you eat of this bread and you drink from this cup, you proclaim my death and resurrection until I return. Friends, in just a moment, the ushers will invite you forward to receive communion. If you are unable 
or uncomfortable coming forward to receive communion, but would like to receive communion in your pews, please let the ushers know they have single-serve cups that they can share with you where you are. As you come forward, you'll notice there are three stations up front. The middle station is gluten-free, uh, and so you may partake from that or one of the regular stations on the sides that have the bread and single-serve cups. After you have been served a piece of bread and taken a single-serve cup and drunk from it, uh, there are waste receptacles in the front of the church uh, that you can drop that in on your way back to your pew. I think we've covered it all, friends. In just a moment, you will be invited to come forward and taste and see that the Lord is good.
your table. And we are in awe. We are in awe of your goodness and your mercy. We're in awe of your amazing power to create, to bring life, to restore, to instruct. We pray that through the power of your Holy Spirit, you would continue to do this in our lives and that we would share, we would share the abundant blessings of your Spirit, of your way, truth, and life with others. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. And now, friends, let us rise to be blessed. Remember the amazing and abundant gifts that you've been given. Remember that we are the church when we are together, but we are still the church scattered out in the world, wherever we are during the week in between times that we meet here. So go to be the church. Go to be the salt and light that Christ proclaimed you to be. And go in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.